No, I'm sorry. Go back to yours. Go back. back. Go back back into my apples. (laughs) Hello, interwebs, and welcome back. I'm Shanna, and this is where I share my life and stories and visions, opinions, and whatever else I feel like. Today, we are throwing it back to a sort of podcast style conversation between Cooper's Charms and I, my best friend, of course, and I about our adventures at TwitchCon, some of our opinions, whether we think it's worth it for you to go to TwitchCon, especially if you are not a content creator, particularly a streamer, and just some of our opinions on a lot of the different things that happened. This was recorded shortly after, so Cooper was still recovering as she had been sick and had lost her voice, so just keep that in mind. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. Cooper, you didn't you didn't introduce yourself at all in the vlog though. Do you want to introduce yourself? You want to tell uh, everybody about you? And sure. Who you are and what you do? Uh, my name's Cooper. I'm a uh, Twitch partner horror streamer, and I play mostly Phasmophobia, just like Shanna. <laughs> it just got really dark in my room out of nowhere. Do you see that? Yeah. Where'd the sun go? <laughs> there goes oh, the sun. Do, 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 do. There goes the oh, wait. sun. You didn't see it? Oh, I mean, we sound exactly like the song. We're definitely going to get DMCA'd. <laughs> so TwitchCon. TwitchCon. Hey. Yeah. What do you think of it? How was it? How was it for you? I really love TwitchCon. This is my second year going. And I had a lot of fun last year, um, even as I was a, a very small Twitch affiliate that had just been streaming for maybe not even quite a year at that time, at least not since my hiatus from 2020. But anyway, <laughs> um, I didn't really know that many people going to TwitchCon last year. And I yeah. still had. I still had a blast with TwitchCon. Um, As a creator, I think it's one of the coolest things that you can do um, with Twitch. But this year was especially just so much better. Because first of all, my best friend got to go. Both of my best friends. Yeah. My RL best friend and my Twitch best friend. The two best friends that anyone anyone can have. have. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So this year, I mean, and plus I got to know so many. So last year, I didn't know anybody from the Phasmo community. Um, and this year, I knew so many people from the Phasmo community. And so just getting to meet all those people that I have looked up to and have got to play games with and just, you know, become really good friends with ended up going. And it was just it was really fun. It was yeah. really, really cool. Yeah, it was it was so cool. And you were you were your partner this year, which was so yeah. cool. I was I'm so fucking proud of you, Cooper. I'm Thank so you. proud of you. And like it was just it was so cool getting to go with you for my first TwitchCon and like having that experience and also getting to hear about your previous experience as well. And mm-hmm. like you having that knowledge and being able to kind of help like guide throughout this one even though like it was obviously in a different location so there were there were some things that were were different about it um as far as like the setup and everything but But general um, format is usually it was pretty consistent yeah from last year so yeah but i mean getting to hang out with everybody was by far the best part of twitchcon like the mm-hmm. the community and just running into people and whether it was at TwitchCon or at the after parties, like it was just it Even was just amazing. at our Airbnb. Oh my god, I know. I know. Yeah. It was amazing. It was amazing. We had I the couldn't... best people staying at the Airbnb too. So it was just like, you know, everybody got along. Everybody was like kind of like the same like energy yeah. level and Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we all I feel like we all really like worked well together and yeah. like it, it was coordinated well and it was there was no like, oh, I want to do this and I want to do that and I want to do this and arguing over who was going to do what. There wasn't any drama like it was it was so good. It was so what? good. I was I was I was surprised, pleasantly surprised that we like were able to coordinate so many people in such like a cohesive way yeah absolutely so that was great no i was gonna say even if people wanted to go off on their own like and do their own thing that was totally fine too yeah yeah nobody nobody got like 
butthurt about it, yeah. which was nice. Yeah. So it was it was really good. It was really good. Um, what do you think of like the panel setup and all the different panels at TwitchCon? I didn't go to as many panels this year as I did last year. Um, a lot of the panels kind of tend to be kind of samesies. So I didn't feel the need to go to some of them, but the panel setups, there were, obviously we know, some, I, I know your opinion of at least one of them. <laughs> and uh, I think for the most part, the panels were cool. The w panels that I ended up going to, I don't know that I had any like overwhelmingly good takeaway from them. Mm -hmm. Like there was one panel and I'm sorry for, for the panelists that were on that panel, but like they were talking about tags for Twitch. And I was like, oh, maybe they're going to talk about like what statistically ends up working better or whatever. But a lot of like what they had to share with us was anecdotal. And I was like, well, those things aren't going to work for me because a lot of them were like, oh, you know, use your LGBTQ tags or your a lot of the panelists were people of color. And so they they were using some of those tags. And I'm like, yeah, well, those are great for you guys. But like, I can't put those like those kinds of tags in mine. Yeah. Because, you know, I'm obviously yeah. not a person of color, but like you can't put what in you're your not. Tag. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like you don't want people to find you based no. on those tags when you're white. So no, no. Yeah, that no. would be that would that would be very bad. That would be very bad. You know what I mean? And so it's like this. It's very anecdotal about, and like but person by person basis. So I didn't find much value out of like some of the panels that I went to or like we went to the, um, what was it? Was it TikTok? Something about TikTok? Yeah, the TikTok Posting one. Posting to TikTok or something mm -hmm. where. That was another very anecdotal one. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I'll let you talk more about that because you have more experience <laughs> with like why that was not a very good panel. But. I don't know. I just, I, I didn't find, I didn't go to too many panels, but the ones that I went to, I don't know, this year maybe weren't yeah. as applicable. I don't know what goes into the research behind the panels themselves and how they get chosen and who gets put on what panel. I can tell you my experience in when I went to Conjuration and I was on panels at Conjuration and the way that worked was you submitted like a panel idea. So like I have this topic that I think would make a really good panel and the people running Conjuration would be like, oh yeah, that's great. All right. So now that you're going to be on this panel, um, we want you to have five people on the panel. So we're going to submit our, your, your panel um, to everybody else who's also has a panel to see if anybody's interested in being on it. And then, um, you know, you can choose from those people who um, you want to be on the panel with you, essentially. And then if you are on, I think it was like three or five panels or something like that, you get your ticket free. So like you're motivated to be on more panels because right. you get a free ticket that way. And so like when I was going to Conjuration, I was like, oh, OK, well, here's the panel that I'm already going on. Um, because I was going with my friends and we submitted this panel together. Um, but I'm interested in all these other ones too. And for the most part, like all the ones that I was interested in that I ended up getting chosen for um, made sense. But there was one panel in particular that when I showed up for it, I was like, I am severely underqualified to be on this panel. And I don't know how I ended up here. Like, why did you guys pick me? Because it was a bunch of like really like well-known authors who were on this panel and I was oh. like I'm not a well-known author I've been published in like a poetry book like and <laughs> like, you know just random stuff like that but I'm not like I haven't written like a fantasy novel or series like these these people were like well-known authors so I was like how did I end up here so if it's a similar process to that that might be why we ended up with people on these panels who were giving just anecdotal stories, which is why I was so frustrated, particularly on that TikTok panel, because they're up there giving marketing advice with no marketing background. And the information that was being shared, not only was a lot of it anecdotal, but a lot of it was inaccurate. 
And it was like coming from, this is my, this is my job. Like I work in marketing and I work in social media and I get information from people who are either working at these companies or from people who work with people directly at these companies. And so they're telling us like statistics and this works and that works and this works and that works. And I'm like, that might have worked for you, but that's not true. And that's not how the algorithm works. And what are you talking about? <laughs> and so I'm sitting there yeah. listening to them share this information. And I'm like, you're, you're talking to all of these people who want to grow and want to succeed and want to do well and they're looking at you going this person is successful so they know what they're talking about but you don't <laughs> and that person listening to you might not have the same type of content as you so it might not be applicable to them but they don't know that because they don't have a background in marketing and they're new to social media and they're a baby streamer. And like, you know, it's so it's just it was a little bit frustrating to me. So I don't I don't know what goes behind picking the people on the panels, but I wish there was a little bit more like of a selective process. And I do feel like a lot of the the panels that we went to in general were very generic especially because like you can like you were telling me um watch the live streams of them so whether or not you had a ticket to twitchcon it was information you could get anyway and then a lot of the information as well can be found by watching a youtube video or can be found by reading an article on the internet so we weren't getting a lot of like exclusive information that we couldn't get elsewhere where i thought they really succeeded were the ones that were with like uh mr clancy and he was up there and we could get up and ask him questions directly that was yeah. awesome that was really cool and being able to actually like get to interact with the CEO of Twitch mm -hmm. was really cool. And like, I, I have like a, like a, you know, I respect him. Yeah. Well, especially after that panel. Yeah, absolutely. Oh. Absolutely. Yeah. Same, same. Or like the indigenous panel I thought was really yeah. interesting too. Like ones that were like, those are ones you, we don't get that information somewhere else. Right. And it was, right. it was unique. And the people obviously were qualified who were sitting yes. in front of you. And it wasn't just random people who were sharing their anecdotal stories that made them feel like they were qualified, you know? Right. right. So I don't know. I will say too, there was a panel where um, I, we learned more about Twitch stories. Yeah. And all there, everybody that was on the panel was Twitch staff. That That's one cool. Was, that one was um, beneficial too, because you got to ask Twitch staff that was that were physically working on the app, you know, those kinds of questions. Yeah. So when it's like Twitch staff and stuff like that, that's talking about it. I loved those kind of panels. Yeah. Yeah. I think Ashley's one that she went to that was parenting. I think she said was really good too, because yeah, you know, you, you have people sitting in front of you who like are in a similar situation to you. So they're able to talk to you and give you advice that is actually applicable to you. And it's not just like we're sitting, you know, in front of people who are giving advice and they're not even in the same genre of content as us giving advice. You know what I mean? Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's I, I think I think it's very different depending on who is leading the panel. Um, and I, I just wish there was a little bit more selectivity, I guess, and yeah. maybe a little bit more research um into who who is leading those things because that would make them more valuable to us as the creators sitting there as the moderators sitting there in in even in the moderator panel the, there was one the moderator panel um the person who's behind moderation was there and he it was really cool um i think for dave getting to listen to him um but there was a, still just a lot of like more general information for the most part in that one even. Yeah. So I don't know. 
Just my opinion. Yeah. Just my opinion. No, I completely agree. <laughs> some of them were good. Some of them were not. But I also didn't go to a whole lot of panels this year. Of we couldn't get into better, some of them. Yeah. Which one was that? I don't remember which one that was. I don't remember, but I, it was full. So yeah, it was, it was, it was, I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't expecting to not be able to like get in. I was like, oh, okay. That's okay. cool. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> Especially because like we were running around lost trying to figure out how to get there. <laughs> yeah. But thankfully after that happened, I think um, from there. We kind of we were we kind of familiar with yeah them. familiarized ourselves with yeah. the layout after that so all good for... expo floor and the brands yeah the brands. yeah expo floor talking to brands that was fun that was fun it was that was something I did not do last year at, at all? all no like <clears throat> I'd go to the like floor just to get <laughs> the free stuff. <laughs> But I didn't talk to anybody that was and be like, hey, like, I want like a partnership with you guys because I've always had a hard time accepting partnerships, not again, not all of them are partnerships, but like affiliate, whatever things that mm -hmm. people will approach me in emails about that are very generic and yada, yada, yada. But like, I didn't talk to any brands last year. And so this year it was, um, it was different. And in fact, Shanna. Uh, took the lead on all of that so <laughs> we had we had a little pep talk we had a little yeah. pep talk about it yeah <laughs> I was like hi I'm just standing here in the back and this is this is my this is my friend over here and she's gonna talk for me <laughs> <laughs> that was literally me trying to talk to people at the meetups though Cooper <laughs> I was like I don't want to I'm scared to talk to anybody like but yeah, the, the expo floor was really cool. It was really yeah. cool. There was so much stuff there and so many brands there. Um, and I think uh, having having a business card was definitely super helpful. Super, super helpful. Yes. Um, and then on top of that, um, not being afraid to be like, hey, I do want to talk to whoever's whoever's here that uh handles your creator partnerships and when they ask you like oh well we have <laughs> that's me that's me where's yours i've got yours right here hold on hold on there's gonna make my stuff behind me because i was gonna show all the stuff i got at baby <gasps> Don't tell her. Don't tell me what? What'd you do? Oh, well, okay. Well, <laughs> I got it too. I got, I got, I got it too. <laughs> <laughs> These are very important if you're a creator and going to mm. TwitchCon. Just. Yes. Yes. And if you can't hire somebody to make your card for you just to take that off your plate make it yourself on canva it's free do it or hire ashley or hire ashley or hire ashley because she did a great job with ours having the card was super useful i also yeah. um in case i ran out of cards or in case i had a situation where i didn't have my card on me have my qr that's on my phone also that's a super great. super super handy thing just in everyday life too cuz you never know who you're going to run into somewhere that is like oh i love your beanie and it's like oh that's my beanie look i make content here scan my qr code you know what i mean like so it's just super super useful to have if you're a creator or if Definitely. you own a shop of any kind, honestly. And don't be afraid to to ask to talk to that person who does the partnerships. And when they say, you know, oh, we have an affiliate thing. No. Push for partnership. I want to talk to the people who do the partnerships. Because the affiliate things make them more money than you. And the partnerships form a relationship between you and the brand. And it's better for both you and your community. So, personally, that's what I think. Back to the community meetups. 
<laughs> that was literally me trying to talk to people at the meetups though cooper <laughs> i was like i don't want to i'm scared to talk to anybody like well it was harder because we you know we went to the lgbtqia meetup and i'm sure it would have been great but like nobody there i shouldn't say nobody but like it was hard to tell like who's in your genre yeah and stuff like that it's it's easier when hey you already know those people because they're in your same genre you get to know those people you know around you um but be like just because you have you know lgbtqia in common doesn't mean like it doesn't mean you're gonna be kind of harder to yeah it's kind of harder to connect with somebody outside of your genre just Mm. blank yeah Um, no no i absolutely i watched a video recently too about um making friendships with people and um one of the things that the video talked about was like when you go to these like like meetups and stuff like that um and especially if you go like with your comfort person um you know which i feel like was very much the situation with you and i (laughs) being very careful about like grouping together um so like when you when you group up and you like make a circle and you close yourself off because it really closes yourself off to allowing people to come in when you do something like that so like when we were at that lgbtq meetup and like dave was like you need to go tell that girl that you like her hair and i was like no i really don't want to like (laughs) <laughs> like, I'm good. Like, and he's like, no, you should go tell her. And I was like, yeah, but um, you know, I don't like to talk to strangers. <laughs> and he's like, and he was like, Shanna, go freaking tell her. And I was like, okay, fine. Um fine, fine. <laughs> basically. And then like they were standing in a circle. And it was hard for me to like figure out like how do I insert myself into the circle? And of course, as soon as I like walked over, they were like, oh, let's like make the circle bigger, which like most people will do. But like it closes you off to like having more interactions and meeting more people when yeah. you put yourself in a shape that is closed off like that. So I had a situation like that at the horror meetup where I wanted to like kind of like interject and be like we already talked but like I forgot to get a photo with you and like I awkwardly stood there for a while because you know it was all closed off and literally nobody was noticing me so I was like all right I'll come back maybe (laughs) so yeah yeah Um, yeah I I was I was in that situation a few times so I I get it I get it the horror meetup was so good it was by far the highlight of of the weekend for sure i had so much fun meeting so many people there so many people there but the fact that we got to meet the faz developers i wanted to cry i wanted to cry (laughs) Uh, yeah yeah (laughs) me too i was so nervous and like you know i just wanted to tell them how much i truly appreciate that the work the work that they do same because I feel like you know a lot of people and some people chose to be like why doesn't this work why doesn't this work Mm -hmm. but like you know they get enough of that in their you know report a bug exactly discord exactly I wanted to be like I I appreciate everything that you guys yeah exactly you guys have changed my life like Mm -hmm. (laughs) so that was incredible and being able to tell them that was a really surreal experience yeah yeah, being able to tell them that like you and I wouldn't be as close as we were if it weren't for Phasmo, like it's true. That's crazy. That's crazy. And Shuey, oh my god, she's, she's so, so sweet. sweet. She's so sweet. She's so sweet. I um felt like a complete ass that I didn't know who she was. Like I'd seen her, but I didn't. Well, you make um, that connection now. Yeah, that's one great thing about TwitchCon is making new connections. I love you. I'm gonna cry. I love you. <laughs> I love you. If it weren't for Faz, we wouldn't like we wouldn't be so close. And it's so crazy to me. I love you so much. You're my best You're friend. Stop it. Stop no, I'm it. sorry. Go I'm back in like, tears. Go on. back. <laughs> Go back into my apples. <laughs> no, it's true. Cause like, you know, we both started with 
Harry Potter was with you night. And then I, I stopped way before you stopped doing making content. You stopped yeah. making content when the, when the games just stopped being a thing, but I stopped a while back and I feel like, you know, some of my relationships within the Harry Potter Wizards Unite community kind of fell off because of that. Yeah. At least at least a little bit. Because, you know, it's harder to maintain those relationships when you're not actively making the content and whatnot. So. Yeah. No, it is. It yeah. is. And then we found out we both loved this ghost hunting game. That was fucking terrifying. No. I, rem- <laughs> I remember that conversation when we when we were at the meetup in New York when I was like, I was like, yeah, I play this game, Phasmophobia, but none of my friends really play, and, like, I'm scared. And you were like, I play Phasmophobia. (laughs) And I was like, what? Well, we should play together. And then, like, we were just, like, playing off stream together, and I was a terrified little baby. I'm like... (laughs) I have this one memory of us being in Willow, and this was before, like, the garage doors at that time were still glass doors. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I remember being in there and I remember you being like hidden behind the door because that's when door hiding was still a thing. Mm-hmm. And I think I left and you're like, you left me in here alone. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry. I was so terrified to be alone. I was so terrified to be alone. Well, and it was like you you watched Phasmo streamers back then. Mm-hmm. And I like yeah. that was still even though. I streamed, but I wasn't like, I don't even know that I would call myself a streamer at that point because I streamed, but I like wasn't consistent. I didn't have a schedule. Like I just kind of streamed when I felt like streaming, like you were the casual streamer, and it was like super random. I was variety streaming, whatever I felt like streaming at the time. Um, yeah, it, it was very casual. It was very casual. And like, so I didn't, I didn't even watch a lot of Twitch. Like, so I didn't have streamers that I watched. I had never even thought about like, let me watch Phasmo streamers to learn more about Phasmo so I can understand how to play the game more. It was just like, this is a spoopy game that I like playing and I don't have any clue what's going on, but I'm scared and having fun. So like you introduced me to like, oh, look at all these people streaming this game online, like, who, like, know all these ins and outs about this game that you can learn stuff from. And I was like, this is a thing. Like, I didn't, I didn't realize this was a thing. I thought, like, most people, like, streaming games online was, like, Fortnite. Okay. (laughs) Like, like, I didn't realize. So, because my world before that was pretty much YouTube. So, yeah, and I still watched a lot of YouTube too, because like one of the Phasmo streamers that I watched did a lot of Insem. Uh, YouTube con. Yeah, 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 cool. yeah, Insem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, even then, yeah. like I didn't, I didn't see him on on YouTube though. I didn't even think about looking up gaming content on YouTube. That wasn't. I watched vlogging content on YouTube, and I mean, Pokemon. <laughs> and Pokemon. Yeah. <laughs> Vlogging content, makeup content, and Pokemon. That was, like, my YouTube feed. Like, pretty much. <laughs> so, like, you you, you expanded my my horizon a lot. And, um, you know. And she has since been addicted and on the dark side. I don't know what you mean. Um, but, yeah, it's been life-changing. So, um, I was in the same boat. It was, it was really to cool to just, like meet some of the people that i've looked up to too yeah like hydra um, bearded, yeah, baron. hydra, like, bearded baron yeah um our inspector yeah was there and yeah dream there were so many people dream yeah so many people yeah so many people and people who like i've just you know randomly talk to or come across from other games and communities and connected with that it's like oh my god you're a real human like (laughs) yeah like it's so cool it's so cool to see you it's so cool to like run into you and like you know you meet them and you meet their partner and like it's just it's 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 so awesome it was so cool it's so being able to meet 
who was not at the time our stream team member, um, but is now our stream team member, and in a completely different genre. Um, that was really, really cool. That was Allie. so cool, Allie. 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 Yeah. yeah. That was Allie. so cool. That was so cool. I just, I don't know. Running into all the people we ran into, whether it was in, in a meetup or outside of a meetup, I just, I don't know. I, I would love, love to have more opportunities like that outside yeah. of, outside of TwitchCon. Um, I really want to, to try to plan, like, not necessarily, like, a horror meetup or just, like, a community meetup. But, like, kind of like we did for Wizards Unite when we had, like, the big thing and we all stayed in the same hotel for the most part. And, mm -hmm. like, you know, we had, like, an activity list. And if you went to the activities, you went to the activities. If you didn't, you didn't. If you went to the dinner, you went to the dinner. If you didn't, you didn't. But, like, you know, we all could hang out in the lobbies and we all could go to these things together. Like, I would love to do something like that. That'd be really cool. Um, I think it would be really cool. And I think it would be good to involve both creators and communities who would be interested in it so like maybe it's something we could do through like the stream team or something um yeah be really cool that might be that might be a really cool thing to do but i don't know just something i've, I've thought about since twitchcon that would be fun to to organize um just because that part of it was was so amazing and um and then and it was only well we got to go in there a little early but it technically it was only like scheduled for an hour which we flew were there for by like an hour and a half. it flew by so fast and yeah it was so sad when they kicked us out they, they, they were <laughs> kicking us out too they were like you guys need to leave you need to leave and we're all like still gathering in small groups you need to leave and we're like you need to <laughs> oh leave <laughs> don't make me leave my friends <laughs> uh, it was so sad <laughs> Yeah. it was so fun though it was, it was so, so fun. fun it was so fun something we we kind of briefly touched on and it's kind of i guess related to the community stuff too um before we started talking here um personally i feel like twitchcon is more for creators and less for the community of the creators outside yeah. of the meetups that are scheduled to like meet your favorite creator you can meet so and so at this time on the scheduled time on sunday um and i think that that is something that a lot of people need to be aware of when it comes to twitchcon yeah because it is such an insane busy back-to-back -back weekend with panels and meetups and schedules and running back and forth and the the parties the and floor. the expo floor and trying to talk to brands and even like trying I, I didn't meet everybody that I wanted to meet up with like going back and forth and messages with people and where are you now where are you now where are you now where are you now trying to find people like yeah. and that's even just from like creator to creator like not from like i'm a fan of somebody trying to run into them um you know i think it's it's it, i would be really disappointed if i was a fan of somebody and i spent a lot of money to go to las vegas and stay in las vegas and go to twitchcon and didn't actually get to like really see or hang out with them um that would be really disappointing to me Right. So, and I don't think Twitch does a good job of marketing TwitchCon that way, the way that they like advertise it. Um, and I think it's something people need to be aware of. Yeah, I mean, a lot of it is very much catered to the streamer. It's the streamer experience, you know. Which the it panels should be. Are often, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Um. The panels are often like, you know, there's a bunch of like path to partner, how to, you know, that where there was the TikTok one or like being an indigenous streamer, mm -hmm. not an indigenous community member. <laughs> like, yeah. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. Or right. like a moderator. I mean, you, you can still have you can still have some of the similar experiences with yeah. people, but um there was a moderator panel which was cool, but like a lot of the times if like moderators come and they're not a streamer, usually they're hanging out with, you know, the streamer that they mod for. Yeah, yeah. So in different. that sense, it's a little bit different. But like the average community member going that maybe isn't like a close friend to a streamer or moderator or something like that, you might not have as much things to do. Cause like, do you really care about the brands that are going there or like the different charity organizations that you can talk to and get involved with? Do you really care about that? There's really the only thing going is the community meetups. Yeah. Yeah. So, and maybe the free stuff if you really like free stuff, <laughs> but some of the free stuff is cheap. So it doesn't really, yeah. It's not no, really that great. I agree. And then the stuff that you can buy from like the Twitch store, like you can buy online for the most yeah, part. Exactly. So. For the most part. Oh, no. You got one too? Oh, me too. Yay. <laughs> I love my Twitch pillow. Me too. <laughs> me too. Do not regret getting it at all. Me either. What else did you buy <laughs> while you were there? The sweatshirt. You bought that sweatshirt? I bought a sweatshirt I didn't buy that one I bought this one because oh, I liked this I liked that it said Las Vegas 23 oh I like yeah. that yeah so I got this one yeah I like that one. Oh, I didn't see that one I there was one that really? was like had cards and I think dice on the back which I didn't love but I actually really oh. like that one yeah I like this one. I'm like, yeah. it's like kind of like when you buy a band shirt at a concert. I prefer the band shirt that has the tour dates on it. Yeah. I didn't get one this year. Last year I got a San Diego one, but I didn't get one this year because I, I did not see that particular one, but I saw one and I was like, I don't like that. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, nah. Yeah. I like your purple one, but. I, Me too. I on the back too, it has like the command for bringing up the. Um, the oh, cute! Purple. That's cute. Like it's under my hood. I don't know if you can see. It. Yep, yep. I see it. I see it. It's cute. It's cool. It's cute. I really liked this one. Yeah. If I wore anything besides black, I probably would have gotten that. But you know, <laughs> I I usually will go for the black option, but like. I, I I saw this and I was like I love it. Yeah. No, and it looks so. good on you. That color, that like that shade of purple, looks really good on you. So thank you. <laughs> Plus, I can dress it up with a black beanie. Yeah. Exactly. Shanna's black beanie. <laughs> You've got all the black beanies though. I have one red beanie. Oh, who's who's red beanie? Do you have? It's my poltergeist in training. Beanie. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, I've seen I've seen that one. It's cute. I've seen that one. It's very cute. It's very cute. You're you're not an in training though. You're a poltergeist. I know, but you, you, you wreck shit. Don't lie. But it was cute, and I, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I could talk about the partner lounge. Yeah. Oh, tell, you're at tell least us. Curious. Tell yeah. Tell us about the partner lounge, Koopa. Give us the give us the deep. <sighs> Give us the deep. Let me tell you the okay. one and only time I went to the partner lounge. <laughs> I went there for my partner gift, which, by the way, um, the keycaps do not fit my keyboard. I haven't so, even tried to put my keycaps on. So, yeah, it, the, especially the space bar where it says Twitch bar, partner on it, it. Yeah, it doesn't fit mine. So, it no! doesn't matter anyway because my uh, keyboard has a red backlight to it that is permanent and it looks very tacky with. The purple the keycaps that they gave us. Yeah. It looks very tacky. So I, I don't even care. But uh, I went up there and um, I mean, it was it was cool. Like if you wanted to be. Yeah. It basically looked like that. But our, I think ours was checkered. Yeah, I think. And yours says partner instead of affiliate, obviously. Yeah, honestly, I probably would have preferred those kind of keycaps over the ones that. Oh, I didn't really care about the checkered look, but whatever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But there was like an area where I think there were bathrooms nearby. So you could like, you know, if you, you didn't have to like fight for the bathrooms there. And then um, there was a place where I picked up my partner gift. And then mm -hmm. I walked into another room 
because it was like a hallway and then a room that they okay. kind of set out but there was like a place where you could get like a cappuccino oh okay you okay. could get some popcorn that's I saw nice. people with like little mini cupcakes and pretzels and other little snacks and whatnot but there were also like games i think they had ski ball there and like what is that game that has like a bunch of sticks in it and then like you have to like pull but like there were like I think I know what you're talking about, but I don't know what the game is called. I don't know what the game is called either. Um, but there was like a giant version of that that you could like. What? Play. That's and then there cool. were just a bunch of different tables around. I think there was giant Jenga too. So that's cool. There were there were some snacks, and but that was the one and only time that I visited the partner lounge. Because what good is the partner lounge if like you don't know anybody there? <laughs> Yeah, I, I I really feel like so this was this was another kind of complaint that I had. Um more so on your behalf. Um but I feel like and this would apply, I guess, to me if I didn't have anybody that I was traveling with that wasn't like at least an affiliate. You know what I mean? Um yeah. but if you're going to, whether it's a panel or a lounge or a meetup or something, and it's like affiliates or partners only or something along those lines, you should be able to bring at least one person with you, if not just for safety purposes. Yeah. Because I know just for even just my own, like, social anxiety like it would make me more comfortable to have at least one person with me and imagine like I was married and traveling with my like husband and like maybe he's not in social media at all but maybe he's he takes all my pictures or something like and they're not going to let him into the meetup with me or they're not going to let him into the panel with me or like it just it that doesn't make sense to me like he's my videographer you're not going to let him into the partner lounge with me so he can take my my video up there or take my photo up there like seriously like that yeah. makes that doesn't make sense to me so yeah it was a little disappointing and one of the reasons why I did not go to the partner party because I couldn't bring a plus one. So I wasn't going to go. And I'm a, I'm very much an introvert. And I'm not like one to, hi, how are you? My name is Cooper. Blah, 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 blah. Who are you? Like, I don't do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. No, I, I, I feel like they should at least allow a plus one to all of this stuff. If nothing else, for safety purposes. For safety nothing... purposes alone, yeah. Yeah. That was that's just my opinion. There there were some experiences that I personally did not have because I didn't mm -hmm. want to you know be alone. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. I I wouldn't have I don't know, going to like a club or a party by yourself not knowing anybody as a female like some people might be cool with that but i don't know a lot of females who are comfortable with that and i know that like several of our friends who went to the partner party alone were male and they were like why didn't yeah. you go and it's like well mm. because you know you're not a girl you don't have the same experience that like you know, we do like, it, it's just, it's not the same. It's not the same. It is true. It's, it's kind of the sad truth. So. So I don't know. Just, just saying. Yeah. <laughs> but, but next year when Shanna's partner. Maybe we'll win, see. If. It's a win, not if. I don't know. You know what? I can, I can see you. My thoughts on TwitchCon, I really had a blast. And if you're a creator in the space, just even if you're small, like I made a lot of connections last year where I got to, I, I met up with at least two people that I had met last year 
that I didn't previously know until I met them at TwitchCon. And so that was a really unique experience, even though I was a tiny creator at the time. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I'm still kind of a small creator, but like. You ran into one you know, of them in the bathroom again. Yeah. I did. <laughs> you were like, I recognize you from last year. Yeah. <laughs> that, was that was so really funny. Cool. That was so it funny. Was really cool. The bathroom really at the Twitch cool. party is a great place to meet people. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> Drunk women at, at a <laughs> TwitchCon party, you'd be surprised how many of them are like, I freaking love you. <laughs> like, Everybody just Let's kind of like clicks in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. You don't know anything about ASMR? <laughs> I'll show you some ASMR you'll like. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, I love it. I love it. So yeah. I highly recommend creators of all sizes, as long as you're passionate about, you know, being a creator in the space. Like, I think that's the only prerequisite to you going. Yeah. Yeah, I would say like if it's not something that you're actually passionate about, it's a lot of money. Don't don't waste your money on it if you're not actually passionate about it. If it's not something that you you really want to do, whether it's doing it as a hobby or doing it as a side hustle or doing it as a career, like if it's not something you love, then don't do it, but if it's something you love, absolutely. Yeah be there because it's it's an amazing experience and the connections you'll make and the people that you'll meet who you met you know online that you you might have thought were ai before and find out that they're not um <laughs> it's just it's it's absolutely absolutely amazing um and i feel like it really strengthens those those relationships a lot too so Agreed. Mm. next year TwitchCon 2024? Yeah. I mean, I've already basically planned for TwitchCon every year. So I'll be there. <laughs> I'll be there. I'll be there too. But thank you for talking with me, Koopa. Of course. <laughs> Thanks for, for going to TwitchCon. I know I kind of kind of pressured you into it. Well, you bullied me. <laughs> you bullied me. <laughs> <laughs> but Shanna, you need to go. <laughs> All of a sudden, you and everybody else is in my chat bullying me. I'm like, ah, oh, I guess I'm going. Yeah, I'm going. <laughs> no. And now, and now you understand why. I do. I wanted you to go. I do. I do. I do. So I do. I do. All right. You want to say bye? Bye, YouTube. <laughs> If you guys made it to the end, make sure to do all the things that you're supposed to do. Subscribe, hit the like button, turn the bell on, leave a comment below, and of course, we will see you in the next one, and hopefully I won't be so incredibly behind on all of my editing at some point, but you can always catch live streams over on Twitch, and I always stream here as well on Sundays for the weekly Phasmophobia challenge and community games so we'll see you sundays here and quite often over on twitch love you guys bye stay geeky <laughs>